In this screencast, we'll go over the use of tables and fields within Directus. In the previous video, covering installation, we opted to include a demo table within our database. We'll use this basic structure as a template to create a few more tables a typical website might use. But first, let's take a look at the default demo table. We start on the Settings tab, where an overview of all managed tables is available. If we now head over to the Tables tab, we can choose to add a new item and take a look at the CMS side of the demo table. Pretty straightforward. Now let's see how easy it is to create or change tables and fields within Directus. Here we're using an application called SQL Pro, but you could use phpMyAdmin just as easily. Start by duplicating the demo table to create an About Us table. Since the website we're creating will only have one About Us page, we can delete the active and sort fields, which are used when deactivating and reordering multiple items. We'd like two separate fields to add content for this page, so we adapt the field names as needed and delete the rest. Duplicating the demo table again, now we'll create the basic blog page. We want to be able to make drafts or delete items, so this time we'll leave the active field as is. We can remove the sort field, however, since our front end will order items based on the date they were posted. Again, we can change some field names and data types to match the content of our blog. Now we only need one more table for this site, so we'll change the demo table to be called Projects. We'll want the active and sort fields for this page, so those can stay, and let's modify the rest to match our desired project content. Directus has quite a few ways to visualize or manipulate data depending on the field's data type. To learn more, visit getdirectus.com options. If you need more fields for a table, just add them. Heading back to Directus, refreshing the page shows that all of our database changes are instantly reflected. We could stop here, but let's customize a few of our new fields. The single checkbox is used by tables that will only have one item and therefore can bypass the browse page. Inactive by default means that when blog items are saved, they will initially be drafts and not show up on our site until made active. We can also make certain fields required and even add helpful notes for the CMS users. To allow our slideshow field to accept images, just set it to the media type and then limit its extensions to the common picture formats. The options type is a great way to limit choices within a field, but the more robust relational type will prove invaluable for more complex database architectures. Let's save these changes by clicking Update Settings and then head back to the Tables tab to appreciate our work. As you can see, our About Us table has an icon indicating that it only contains a single item. Clicking in takes you directly to the edit page where you can add some content and save back to the tables list. Now within the blog table, we'll need to click Add New Item to create our first post. Notice the helpful note we added to the Featured checkbox and the Useful Date Chooser. Remember, we set the blog items to save as inactive by default. Finally, take a look at our Projects table. Again, we add a new item. You can see that the character limit is automatically set based on the field length of 100 we set in the database. To add some images to our slideshow, we'll just drag and drop a few kitties directly from our computer. Enter a few tags, choose a category, and that's it. Saving this project would instantly add it to our website. 